I just wanted to show here, I have the, uh, the book, The Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus. Uh, this is the book that he wrote that goes along with the film. And I wanted to show in this book that uh, they actually do agree with the 215 years in Egypt. Um, over here they show that this guy named James Hoffmeyer, uh, he believes that the Israelites were in Egypt about 430 years. Uh, Bryant Wood and Charles Ailing, they believe they were in Egypt for 430 years. And those guys are represented, uh, out of these four, they're represented up here. James Hoffmeyer and Bryant Wood and Charles Ailing. And those guys have the Israelites in Egypt for 430 years. Um, but down here you've got John Bimson and David Roll. John Bimson... He says that the Israelites were in Egypt for just a little more than 200 years. And then you've got David Roll, who also believes that uh, he goes with a shorter stay for the Israelites in Egypt for a little more than 200 years. And those guys are represented uh, down here. So here's what John Bimson believes, and then here's what David Roll believes. And so you can see that um, with these two guys up here who believe in the 430 years, you can see um, that uh, the pattern is, is, is longer. And then down here, you can see they've got a shorter pattern. But uh, both David Roll and John Bimson believe in the shorter 200-year stay in Egypt. And uh, that's what it says over here. And then it shows what they believe visually over here with these, with these four things in the book. And then also in the back of the book they have a section um, where they, they talk about what the Patterns of Evidence guys believe. And they say back here, they say, with about 210 or 215 years spent in Egypt in a period of slavery of about one century, all the time that was left in the sojourn after the, the death of Joseph's generation, an accurate timeline for the biblical events, including all these factors, can be produced. And so they're basically saying that they agree with about 210 or 215 years spent in Egypt. So that's what these guys believe. And then over here they've got they've got the Exodus at about 1450 BC. And then they say that Jacob's the arrival of Jacob's family in Egypt, they believe was about 210 years about 210 years before that, about 1660 B.C., which they put 210 here, but over here they say 210, 215, one of those two. And, um, of course, I got David Rowland video saying 215. And so that's what uh, the Patterns of Evidence team has done. They say the Israelites arrived in Egypt about 1660 or, um, or 1665 B.C., and then the exit is about 1450 B.C., approximately. And so that's what they believe. And this is in a chapter towards the very end of the book. If you ever have to get this book. It's called the Bonus Chapter D, 400 Years of Slavery. And they go through um, all the information of how long were the Israelites in Egypt. Was it 430 or was it 215? And um, one of the things that they show here is they show the ages of Kohath, Amram, and Moses. You add them up, it only comes to 350. And this is something that I had shared in the video that I made. Um, how long were the Israelites in Egypt? I showed that. And so they conclude here that, yep, it was about 215 years spent in Egypt. And I just wanted to show that uh, that's what the guys at... Uh, Patterns of evidence believe. They, they agree with the 215 years. They didn't actually explain that in their movie, but that is actually what they believe, and they explain it in the hardcover book that, that goes along with the movie. And this is a really cool book, too. They got all kinds of pictures and all kinds of charts and lots of really, really cool stuff in here. Pretty neat stuff. Lots of pictures from the movie, the Twelve Pillars, and Joseph's Tomb, and the Joseph Statue, and all kinds of neat stuff in here. Really neat book. There's Ramesses, and there's Avaris. 
This is interesting. The Israelites were building the store cities of Pithom and Ramesses, right? Well, Pithom is not really a store city. Well, Pithom is a store city, but Ramesses was not. Why would the Bible say they were building the store city of Ramesses when Ramesses was not a store city? Well, the reason why is because Avaris is a store city. Avaris had enormous storage facilities and numerous silos. Avaris was a store city, so that's the city that the Israelites were building. Anyway, it's a pretty cool book. Another book that I think is pretty cool is um, this book that uh, Glenn Fritz wrote. And this is called The Lost Sea of the Exodus. And this is something that uh, is going to be featured... Uh, well, it was already featured in the first Patterns of Evidence, uh, the Red Sea Miracle documentary. And also it's going to be featured in the next Patterns of Evidence on May 5th. And uh, Glenn Fritz goes through all this stuff about the Red Sea. He believes this is what the Red Sea crossing uh, would have looked like. And he's got all kinds of uh, really cool stuff in here. And uh, one of the things he shows here is he shows that the grade going down into the sea was about a 10.5 uh, degree grade going down, which is about equivalent to the maximum allowance for interstate highways. And then he says coming back up out of the sea is only about a 13% grade coming up out of the sea, which is about the equivalent of uh, the maximum allowance for wheelchair ramps. And he explains this. He explains this over here. Um, yeah, he says, in fact, the 10.5 average downhill slope on the west is identical to the 10.5 maximum usually allowed for the interstate highway. On the east, the 13% uphill slope is similar to the 12.5% wheelchair ramp regulations. And so he, he talks about how, you know, interstate highways can only slope to a certain uh, maximum allowance. Wheelchair ramps can only um, be, you know, so s steep. And so, so he shows how when the Israelites went down into the sea and then came back out, up out of the sea, it wasn't super steep. It was no steeper than a wheelchair ramp or an interstate highway. And this here, this is interesting, he shows how it's about 9.9, 9.6 miles between the Nueva Beach and Saudi Arabia. That's the Gulf of Aqaba there. And uh, I think they're going to show all this stuff in the next Patterns of Evidence movie. This is interesting. They show the uh, pathway going down through this ravine and then down to the beach, which I think they call this the Mouth of the Gorges, or Paihahirath, and that's where they crossed the sea, right there, and then uh, came back out of the sea. And uh, all kinds of maps and charts and geography, and he talks about the Straits of Tehran. He doesn't believe that's the correct place to be crossing. He thinks that's wrong. <clears throat> and he shows these are the these are the, actually the three spots that are going to be discussed in the next Red Sea Miracle movie on May 5th. Uh, one spot, which some think is up here. This is the Gulf of Aqaba, by the way. And uh, some people think it's up here, and some people think it's here at the Nueva Beach, and then some people think it's down here at the Straits of Tehran. And they're going to be discussing all three of those in the next Red Sea Miracle movie. I think that's going to be pretty exciting. But, um... Yeah, this is made by this guy named Dr. Glenn Fritz. And he's actually the guy that gave me a lot of the information for how long the Israelites uh, were in Egypt. Um, he was the guy who wrote an article, and I got a lot of information um, from his article that he wrote. And so, yeah, he's got a pretty cool book here. All about the Red Sea crossing. He's got tons of maps in here. Really neat stuff. I don't know what that is. And, uh, look at all this stuff. And, of course, that's what's normally in the back of everyone's Bible, which is totally wrong. The crossing site was right about here, approximately. And, uh, why is it out of focus? Focus, okay. 
And what do we got over here? Straits of Tehran, all this stuff. Nueva Transit. Yeah. Yeah, he shows how the in the He shows how the Straits of Tehran simply cannot be the place where they cross, mainly because of this right here. It's just way too steep. The Israelites could not have gone down there. And that's why the Straits of Tehran just simply wouldn't work. Um but the Nueva beach is it would work because it's a gentle slope down and a gentle slope back up out. Of course, that's not, it's longer than that. that that's showing it steeper than it really is. Anyway, lots of cool stuff in here, but I mainly just wanted to show that the patterns of evidence team, they agree with the 215 years in Egypt. Um, I just wanted to make that clear.